Do you guys know what uh, the Beatitudes are? Anybody ever heard of that? Anybody in here? The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. Anybody know where I could find the Beatitudes in the scriptures? Hey, no leaders. Come on, get out of here. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Matthew. Matthew chapter what? Anybody know? Any of the students? Hi. You want a five? Five. Oh, yeah. It's actually chapter five. All right. Okay. So the, the Beatitudes, guys, listen up, uh, it's connected with a sermon called the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is probably one of the most popular teachings that you'll ever listen to, that you'll ever see in Scripture, and not only Christians talk about the Sermon on the Mount and how great those words are that Jesus taught, but other people talk about how awesome the Sermon on the Mount are. You guys probably know a lot of the words and a lot of the teachings that Jesus taught on that day on the hill. Right? The Sermon on the Mount. So here's something that you guys may have heard before. Have you ever heard this? Judge not, lest you be judged. You've heard that before? Okay, that's in the Sermon on the Mount. How about treat others the way that you want to be treated? You ever heard that? People get that from Jesus speaking the Sermon on the Mount. What we're about to study, the beginning of it. What about, have you ever heard, go the second mile? A lot of people get that saying from the scriptures. Jesus said, if someone makes you go one mile, you go an extra mile. So when you hear, hey man, you need to go the extra mile, always think, hey, that's what Jesus said. Enter the narrow gate. Seek first the kingdom of God. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. You guys know where the Lord's Prayer is located? The Lord's Prayer? It's in the Sermon on the Mount. Be salt and be light. That's the Sermon on the Mount. And let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and they glorify your Father. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Thank you, Neil. <clears throat> uh, but yes, that's all the Sermon on the Mount. So what I want to do is I want to open up the Scripture and I want to give you a little taste of just the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And I want you guys to know that the Sermon on the Mount isn't for everybody. I know that sounds crazy. I just said that a lot of secular people, people who are not Christian, uh, like the Sermon on the Mount. But the Sermon on the Mount was never meant for them. The Sermon on the Mount was meant for disciples of Jesus Christ, which I hope that the majority of us in here tonight are disciples of Jesus Christ. You'll actually see that Jesus, at the very beginning, Jesus saw the crowds. He went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. All right? And he began to teach his disciples this sermon. Okay, now it wasn't just the 12, but it was all the people that were following Jesus, right? His disciples. It wasn't to entertain the mind, this sermon. Listen up. It wasn't to entertain the mind like, oh man, Jesus, you did a great job teaching. I said it was one of the best, but all of Jesus' words are awesome. It wasn't just meant to go, oh yeah, yeah, treat others the way you want to be treated. I'll teach my kid that. No, because it doesn't have any meaning without Jesus, without being a disciple of Christ. And I'm going to show you guys that tonight as we look just at the beginning of the Beatitudes, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, which we call the Beatitudes. You guys maybe heard it. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Flexible? No, that's not one of them. <laughs> but that's a, that's a good try. Good try. Um, so this wasn't meant to, to entertain your mind. It was meant to transform and change your heart. You guys get me? That's very important that you guys know that. This isn't just something that we need to think about and go, oh, Jesus, great job teaching, man. Man, the Sermon on the Mount, I love the Sermon on the Mount. I got it memorized. It's so awesome. I got it, I got it on a plaque in my, in my, in my wall, you know, on my, in my house. It's not meant for that. It's meant to transform your life. The Word of God is meant to come into your heart and change you. All right? Through the Spirit of God, that's what God wants to do. And that's what I pray happens tonight as we go into it. So... We're about to go into the Beatitudes, the Blesseds. All right, let me read it first off, and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. Here it goes. I already read a little bit. Chapter 5, verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened up his mouth, and he began to teach them, saying this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One. Blessed are those who mourn. All right. You guys getting this? 
All right, let, this is the, the Word of God. Think about this. Think about it. Try to understand it. So the first one, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the gentle, the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of things against you because of me. This is Jesus speaking. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven and is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And that's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, one of the greatest sermons ever taught. And that's the Beatitudes. And I think that it's very important that we understand this first section of the Beatitudes for our own walk with the Lord and for this, the rest of the sermon that Jesus teaches. Because without this beginning part, it... The, the rest of it doesn't matter, as crazy as that sounds. And I'm going to tell you why in the first four of the Beatitudes, the blesseds. But first, let's, let's talk about what blessed means. Anybody think they know what blessed means? Anybody? Anybody? You're more than welcome to talk right now. <clears throat> Nobody. All right, I'll just tell you. You ready? Blessed means exactly what we read in verse, verse 12 of chapter 5. Are you ready? Listen up. It goes like this, rejoice and be glad. This is what Jesus said, for your reward is in, in heaven is great. All right, get this. It's eternally minded blessings. Listen, what, when, when we do something, we do it usually for a reward, correct? On earth, like if you are trying to win the Super Bowl, what are you trying to win? You're trying to win a ring, right? You're trying to win the reward. Now that's an earthly reward, so you work your whole life for this reward, for this, this, this thing that you think is so amazing, like, man, I finally accomplished my dream, I finally got my ring, man, I got the trophy, I'm awesome. And then what? In the end, Jesus said it the best, so what? You gain the whole world and you lose your soul. So the blessed that Jesus is talking about isn't like from earthly rewards and things that you can accomplish in and of yourself, but they're heavenly accomplishments. Let's say that. They're heavenly rewards. Blessed. So Jesus said, if you do these things that I listed, you will be blessed, which means you will get eternal rewards, which means you will have good fortune. You guys ever ate a fortune cookie? Got the fortune? Those things are a little whack, you know? They're, they're cool, but... I mean, I like to eat them and I like to see my fortune and be like, yeah, cool, you know. But the thing is, you want good fortune, you want good success, you're not going to find it in the world. You're going to find a form of success, but it's a cheap imitation, let me tell you that. If you want blessings, if you want good fortune, if you want happiness, if you want joy that no one can take away from you, you're going to find it in Jesus Christ. And you're going to find it in his words. So tonight, we're looking at his words. We're looking at the blesseds. And we're going to do like a little compare and contrast. We're going to compare what our natural longing is and the earthly thing and then see the heavenly thing. Because Jesus says, blessed are those who blank because we need to hear it. Because most of the time, we think the other way around. And Jesus is reassuring us, blessed are you when you do this. Guys, I know it doesn't feel great. I know that it doesn't feel like you're being blessed sometimes. But I'm telling you this, you are blessed when you do these particular things. So we're going to see it. So here's the first one. Jesus said this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Just think about that really quickly. 
the word poor, when you think of that word, what do you usually think of? Do you think of happiness? Do you think of like being satisfied? Like being blessed? No, I mean, not, not even like TV evangelists see that. They're like, man, if you want a blessing from the Lord, you got to name it and claim it. But Jesus said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. So when you think of poor, you don't think like this, like that, you, don't, you don't compare that with, with happiness. You're like, man, I'm poor, that stinks. But Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. So you're saying my inner being, I'm poor. Okay, Jesus, I don't understand that. Here's what Jesus means. Being poor in spirit is a healthy realization of a spiritual need. And here's how I know that. The scriptures talk about in Romans chapter 3, 10, it says this, that no one is good. No, not one. Everyone in here falls under that, that category. No one is good. No one is morally perfect. No one does everything right. No one is good. No, not one. Romans 3.23 says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So Jesus, what he means when he says poor, blessed are the poor in spirit, is he says this, blessed are you whenever you realize your need for something. When you realize that you are depraved, you have a spiritual need, you're spiritually lacking, you're thirsty, and you're searching for like fulfillment in everything. Blessed are you when you realize that. The sooner you guys realize that, the better. And this is one of the first parts of coming to the Lord, is you need to realize that you need Him, that you need something. A lot of us try to fill those things with sports. A lot of us fill those things with relationships. Some of us in the room have filled it with alcohol or drugs. Some of us have tried to fill that empty place with something else. We know we have a need, and we're trying to fill it with something. But Jesus said, blessed are you when you realize you have a need. It's really easy, guys, to act like you don't need anything. Isn't it? Really easy to act like you don't need anything that you're fine. But Jesus says this, I know it's hard, but I promise you, you are going to be blessed when you realize you need something. Let's go to the next one. Blessed are those who mourn. Again, it's kind of crazy, right? It goes against our nature. You're telling me blessed am I when I mourn? Like you think of somebody crying, somebody being sorrowful. What does Jesus mean by that when he said that? I think I know. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. It says this. For the sorrow, listen, to mourn is to be sorrowful. Verse 10 says this. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance. Repentance is realizing you've messed up and turning away from your sin. So God says when you have good sorrow and you mourn, the, the sorrow that God's talking about is this, that you are sad that you've done something wrong. That produces repentance without regard, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. Let me give you an example of what that verse means in Hebrews chapter 12. Follow me with this, guys, because this is good. And, and you're going to need this in your small groups tonight. Hebrews chapter 12. Um, Verse 15 says this. See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. All right, listen. It's going to tell us a story in Genesis, the Old Testament, about two brothers, one named Jacob, one named Esau. You guys heard this story before? We're going to learn a little bit about it right now. That there are no mortal... Um, immoral or godless persons like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single mill. For you know that even afterwards he desired to inherit the blessing, but he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it with tears. All right, there's two different kinds of sorrows, guys. How many of you guys have ever gotten in trouble and had to apologize to a sibling? 
Like your mom put you in front of each other and they're like, he's like, apologize right now, right? That's the worst thing. And so you're always like, okay, okay, I'll, I'm sorry. But do you really mean it? No. Okay, that's the kind of sorrow that God's talking about. Or this, maybe you, you do something and then you get grounded for it. And you're sad at the fact that you're grounded, but you're not sad about the fact that you did what you did. You're, you don't regret what you did, but you're like, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm really sad that, that, that I did this. And I really regret the, the fact that I have to go through what I'm going through right now. But you're not really sorry for the thing that you've done. Guys, we do that to God. And it's really easy to do that with God. To so be like, okay, you know what? I know what I did was wrong, and, and now I don't get like this blessing. Jesus said, blessed are you when you mourn. But you're not just sad for, for the consequences of your action, but you're sad because of your actions. That's a godly sorrow that produces repentance, so where you don't do that thing again. Jesus said, blessed are you when you mourn. It's really hard, guys, to be sorry for the root of the evil that is in you. Follow me. It's really easy to be sorrowful for the consequences. So Jesus said, blessed are you, the first one, when you are poor in spirit. You realize you have a need. Now, blessed are you when you mourn. You realize that sin is the problem and you're sorry for it and you turn away from that sin. Now, here's the third one. Blessed are you or those who are humble. Blessed are those who are gentle, who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You realize you have a spiritual need. You're sorry for the sin that calls that spiritual need, that you need God. You're sorry for the bad things you've done. Go one step further. When you realize these two things, are you able to humble yourself and ask God to save you? Or are you trying to save yourself? Like you're trying to fix it. Okay, you know what? I know that I'm, that I'm, I'm in need, and I know that I'm, I'm really sad, but you know what? I can still fix it. I can fix me. I can fix me. I got this. But Jesus said, no. Blessed are you when you humble yourself. Let me take you to one verse. James chapter 4. It's one of my favorite verses because it's one of the hardest things to do in my life. Chapter 4, verse 6. It says this, But he gives greater grace, therefore God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There's two things, to be prideful or to be humble. You get a pick. Which one do you want to be, guys? Which one? Submit, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And verse 10 says this, humble yourself. What does humble yourself mean? Stop being prideful. Stop trying to fix it yourself. Run to God and say, God, I can't do this. I need you. Humble yourself in the sight of God. And he will exalt you. He will lift you up. So, it's really easy to be prideful and to try to take care of yourself. Be like, man, I don't need help. It's really hard. And this is why Jesus is telling you, hey, I know it's hard. But I promise you, if you do this, you will be blessed. You will have good favor. You will be happy. You will find eternal joy. And you will get heavenly rewards if you get this. Humble yourself. It's falling on your knees before God and saying, God, I can't do this. I need your help. That's three. Here's number four. The fourth one that Jesus spoke of. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. By the way, those last three, that's salvation right there. You see a need you're sad and you repent and you trust in God and say, God, you, you're the man. I mean, you're the God. You're the God man, all right? Like, it's, it's up to you to save me. That's salvation. And that's why I said the whole Sermon on the Mount, unless you get these things, you'll never get it. It's not enough. Without salvation, all the rest doesn't matter. You need to understand these. So here's the fourth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. All right? It's really easy to do whatever feels good in the moment. Right? To decide uh, momentarily, like, what I'm going to do. 
you know, to, to go from one pleasure to the next, super easy. But Jesus said this, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's an active desire, and you guys are going to discuss this in your small groups, but it's an active desire to become godly and to live rightly. God has saved you, and now God births in you this desire. And he says, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's really easy when you see a group of people and you're like, or you're like, you know what? No one's at my house right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on the internet and I'm going to go and, and look at things I know I shouldn't look at. Or you know what? Psh, my parents aren't here. I know they got some rated R movies. I'm going to go and, go and put those rated R movies in. I know they told me not to, but I'm going to do it. Who are they to say, man, all my friends have seen Hangover, why can't I? Right? It's really easy to do that. But God said, obey your parents, honor them. It's really easy in the moment to do that. But Jesus said, blessed are you. Guys, you will get an eternal reward if you persevere. Right? If you hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because you're going to be fed. God's going to give you righteousness. You're going to get that because God's going to bless you with that. It's hard to make those decisions. That's why you have to settle in your mind right now. You know what? Today, I choose to follow God. I choose to seek Him, and I choose to thirst and hunger for righteousness. It's the innermost being. You know when you're hungry for something? Like, you're, you're hungry? Like, it's this craving, and you're like, get out of my way. You know what? I'm hangry right now. Don't mess with me. That means I'm hungry and angry. Right? It's, it's anger that's caused by hunger. We call it hangry. So sometimes I get hangry because I'm, I'm hungry, and I'm like, dog, don't mess with me right now until I, get, until I get my Big Mac, man. I'm hungry, you know? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm, I want my belly filled, but God said, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's, it's even deeper than your hunger and your thirst. It's deeper than that. Man shall not live by bread alone. That's what Jesus said as well. <clears throat> if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, Jesus said. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. How hungry are you for righteous living? That's a good question. Here's the next one. Blessed are the merciful. Right? The merciful. Understanding God's mercy. He said this. It's really easy to take vengeance. Am I right? And to get back at somebody. When somebody does you wrong, it's really easy to go... I cannot believe they did that to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit them in the face. You hit me, I hit you. You poke me, I poke you. You bump into me, I bump into you. It's really easy to do that, right? Raise your hand if you think that's really easy to do. Yeah, I do too. It's really hard to show mercy to someone who doesn't deserve it. Like, they push you and they don't even care. But God said, blessed are you when you're merciful. When you forgive and let it go. Because this, guys, this, this is the story that Jesus tells in Matthew. Or actually, um, where is it? It's in Matthew 18. It's a parable of the unforgiving servant. Basically, it goes like this. I've told you guys it before, and you guys can look at it in, up in Scripture, Matthew 18. Here it goes. There's a servant with a master. This, the master gives the servant, let's say, uh, in, in our time, it's, a million dollars. He's like, hey man, take a million dollars and go use it and profit and I'm, I'm giving you this loan and you just got to pay me back. Well, the servant takes that million dollars and spends it on his own pleasures and in the end he has zero. And the master's like, where's my money? Where's my money at, dog? And the servant's like, look, look, I don't have your money. And what the servant does is he goes, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. He does everything that Jesus said in the beginning. He realizes he did something wrong. He repents and he's like, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm asking you to be merciful to me. And the, the master's like, okay, all right. You know what? I forgive you of that. I forgive you. A million dollars. Okay. So turns out that this servant goes out and he has a servant. And this servant owes him $10,000. That's it. Compared to a million dollars, that's nothing. $10,000. This servant cannot pay up, 
So this servant who has just been forgiven this big debt looks at this servant and he says, hey, where's my money? And the same thing happens. The, the guy who owes 10000 he's like, please forgive me, please forgive me, man. I promise you I'll, I'll, I'll get the money. You know, I, I got you. Like, just forgive me. I'm so sorry. And this servant looks at him and he goes, no. So he locks him up in jail. This is the parable that Jesus told. So, whenever this servant or this master heard that this servant didn't forgive a servant under him, he found out and he's like, whoa, 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 nah, that's not how we roll. Man, I forgave you a million dollars and you can't forgive this guy $10,000? And this master punished this servant. Jesus said in this parable, if you're not willing to forgive God in heaven will not forgive you. I know that sounds pretty harsh. I know that sounds pretty heavy. And it's supposed to. It's because of this, guys. When you really understand how depraved you are and how much in need of God you are and how much God has done to save you and how much God has forgiven you of, if you're holding something against somebody else, that's like ridiculous. That's the same thing. God forgave you so much. You need to forgive others. And Jesus said it's more blessed to forgive. It's more blessed to be merciful. Blessed are you when you're merciful. I know it doesn't feel like it. I know it's really hard to forgive somebody who's done you wrong. I'll be the first to admit that. Like, I don't want to forgive that person. But you know what? It's not about me. It's about God. It's about what God wants to do through me. And God's forgiven me so much. And this guy, yeah, he sinned against me. But man, I sinned against God, and God forgave me. So I need to forgive. Guys, if, if you can't forgive somebody, what you need to do is you need to focus on the cross of Jesus Christ. And you need to realize that Jesus suffered and died for you and for your sin. And you're no better than anybody else. And you need to let it go. And you can only do that through the power of Jesus Christ in you. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Here's the next one. Blessed are the pure in heart. We're almost, we're almost finished. We got, we got four more. What this means is check your motives. Blessed are the pure in heart. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That means that your motives are pure. That you do things out of selflessness and love for God and for the glory of God rather than out of selfishness, like for yourself. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's... Um, like when you, when you ask a question and you're like, or, or you, you oh, I got it, yeah, it's like, how about this? When, when you go up to your mom or, or your dad and you're like, hey, hey, can you know who stay? And you know that they're right in front of you, like the, the, the other guy is, and you're like, hey, man, can you spend the night? And the parents are like, really? I know what your motive is right now. You, you're trying to trick me and get me to say yes, because I can't say no in front of them, right? You know what I'm talking about. Like, don't ask me in front of them. I did that all the time. My motive was selfishness. I wanted to get what I wanted. Right? So Jesus said, blessed are you when you're pure in heart, when your motive is not selfishness, but out of love, love of God and love for others. Philippians 2, 3 says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, humble yourself, and count others more significant than yourself. Here's something else. When you do something good, do you do it so that other people will see you? The Pharisees had this problem, right? Matthew 6 says this, Beware of practicing your righteousness, your good works, in front of men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said it pretty plainly. The things that you do, make sure that your motives are pure and out of love for God. Not out of wanting to be seen. Like, man, look at me, I'm awesome. Hey, guys, check this out. I'm walking an old lady across the street. Man, I'm awesome. Jesus said, look, you want people to praise you? You got it. But you know what? That passes away. You got praise on earth? Good job. Up in heaven, God's like, man, your motives were whack. I'm not... 
I'm not honoring that. That's why Jesus said, store up treasures in heaven. Right? Don't do things out of a, a bad motive. And that's really easy. It's really easy to do things out of selfishness. It's really hard. And this is why Jesus is saying, blessed are you when you do it, when you do things out of love for God and not for a reward. There's a song I like to listen to uh, that I like to play on the guitar. You guys never heard it, but um, he says, uh, God, we want more of you. We don't want blessings. We want more of you. That's our focus. That's what we should want. The blessings are good, and they're going to come. But God, I want you. Is that your motive? Here's the next one. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Here's something really easy to do for all of us. I know because I was in school, and I saw uh, a lot of fights in public school. It's really easy to circle around that fight and go, oh, you see an argument, and you go, oh, man, bet you won't hit them. Right? And you're like, oh, who said that? That was me, I said that. Oh, he hit him, you know? That's like, it's like, you know what I'm talking about. It's really easy to be that person, to be somebody who's on the outside going, oh, 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 yo, she just pulled out a weed, man. What? <laughs> right, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't know she had fake hair, oh, man. That, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I did that, all right? I was that guy. So, you know what's really hard? It's to be the person that stands up and goes, hey, man, we can't do this here. It's hard to go, this isn't, this isn't what you're supposed to do. It's hard to be the person that makes peace. It's easy to be divisive, and not just whenever other two other people are fighting, but in between us. It's really easy to, to fight with one another, to be divisive, to talk bad about somebody. But Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. When you see somebody talking bad about somebody else, what do you do? Do you listen to it and like, ooh, I'm getting all the juicy information? Or are you going, hey, that needs to stop right now. That should not be named among us. God has done so much for us and you shouldn't be like that. Are you a peacemaker? It's really hard to seek peace in the life of others. I, those are three different, two different ways so far. In the life of others, in your life, Right? Whenever two people are fighting, are you saying, hey, man, this has got to be peace. And here's the next way. When you see people in your school who do not have peace with God, who are doing the same thing I was talking about earlier, like seeking something, and you're like, man, I know what your need is. It's God. Are you that person who brings them Jesus? Look, this is one of my favorite verses as well. This is 2 Corinthians 5.20. It's right after 2 Corinthians 5.17, which is our kind of like youth group verse, right? So listen, it goes like this. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Let me turn to it. This is good. Therefore, we, all of us in here who've given our lives to Jesus Christ, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us and we beg you, like we're begging you, like please, are you doing this with your friends? With the people that you see? Are you doing this? We beg you, on behalf of Christ, listen, God is speaking through me and I want you to be reconciled to God. That means brought to peace with God. Like you're warring and raging and you're all against God right now, but I, I beg you, turn to God. God loves you so much. Are you that person? Or are you somebody who's like, man, I don't want to deal with that right now. Man, I'm in my own little world, I'm good. It's really easy to be that. It's really easy to not want to get in all the dirtiness, you know? Like, oh man, that's too dirty. I don't, I don't want to mess with that. That's a lot of trouble for me. I like my own little life right now. Guys, I'm guilty of this sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Somebody comes in and I'm like, man, I don't, man, I got, I got this and this and this I need to do. And all the while, they're like in need. And they don't, it's not like physical need. It's like spiritual need. They need Jesus. And I, God is, is, has made me that person to tell them. And sometimes I'm like, whatever. I'm going to do what I need to do. Live in my righteous life. Are you a peacemaker? Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. It's really easy to start a fight, to encourage fights, to be divisive, to look the other way. It's really hard to be a peacemaker in the true sense. And here's the last two. I'm going to put them together. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. How many of you guys, when you do something right, you get made fun of for it? 
you know, you got all these people looking at you and they're like, hey, come on, man, join us with this. And you're like, nah, I can't do that. Maybe not even because it's a sin, but maybe because God has told you not to do it. Like, hey, God, you know what? God, you told me not to do this, so I'm not going to do it, you know? You know what, God, you told me not to go and, and watch that movie. I know all my friends are, and even my parents have told me that I, I could. But you know what, God, I don't want to because you told me not to. Not even because it's like necessarily wrong, but because, God, I, I, I know in my heart that you don't want me to. I'm, I'm, I'm not their master. You're their master. If, if that's for them, that's cool. But that's not for me, right? And they're like, why don't you come? And then they make fun of you, and they're like, man, come on, man. You're so super spiritual. You're an HTTP. You're holier-than-thou person, right? No. Blessed are you. Because that doesn't feel good when all your friends are doing something, and you're like, man, I can't do that because God told me not to. It's really easy, though, to go like this. Man, I'm coming with you guys. And excuse sin. Like, even though God told you not to, you're still doing it. Because you're like, well, you know what? Pleasure loves some company, right? Sorrow loves company. Is that how the saying goes? Something like that? Right? Okay. It's really easy to do that. It's really hard to say, no. I'm going to stand my ground because God told me not to. Here's the next one. Blessed are the persecuted for Christ's sake. It's hard. It's hard when you're judged because of a relationship that you have with God. A relationship that is real and true to you, that maybe someone else doesn't experience, but you know that God loves you and you've experienced God, and it's really hard when somebody's making fun of you for that relationship. But Jesus said, blessed are you when you're persecuted for my name's sake, when you get made fun of for me. Blessed are you. So guys, I wanna encourage you. Blessed are you when you do those things.